You thought that my thumbnail was clickbait? Well, look at here. If you go to where the uh, task, it used to be called Blazor United, this task. This task is now called Full Stack Web UI with Blazor. And now, look at that. The Blazor United stuff has been crossed out. Oh, what is happening here? Well, today we're going to be discussing that and more for Blazor 8 Preview. Because I also have a little demo for you. So unless you've been living under a rock or I've been on a three-week hiatus, then we know that .NET 8 is in preview right now. This is preview 3. And in fact, I actually downloaded uh, a .NET 8 here. I have a little small sample product that I'm going to show off. Nothing too crazy in there. But we do have a lot of notes on things that are related to Blazor for .NET 8. And this is AOT stuff, you know, ahead of time compilation. But the good news is that it, it doesn't support. Uh, there's no support for it in Blazor. So that means that I get to skip all of this. I'm kidding. Well, it means that um, at least for Blazor specifically, AOT is not supported, but there is support for it in other aspects of ASP.NET Core. So if you're using the ASP.NET Core uh, features in that way, then you are you can still use them, but just not for Blazor specifically. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. And don't worry, there's still some good stuff for us Blazor people here, including this, which is probably the more important thing here. It has to do with Blazor United, which is server side rendering with Blazor components. Now, in this case, what they did is they're working on how to render server side components without the need of using the whole architecture that's involved with Blazor server. So you can apply this to something like Blazor WebAssembly so you can have Blazor server components on there. Now, they're, they look like they're still working on it. They're still in the beginning stages. There's no interactivity involved because you basically decoupled it. In fact, it says here, there's no web assembly, website and connections involved. Uh, you don't need to load JavaScript. Um, let me see what it say here. Do -do -do. Go down here. They say that there's no interactivity with it because there's nothing to set up. There's nothing that executes any handlers just yet but they're planning on doing it. So basically what they have here is essentially the proof of concept needed to show that you can have a Blazor server component inside something like WebAssembly. And that allows them to go to the next thing that they created uh, when it comes to uh, rendering these components that are independent of the architecture that they are specifically belong to. You can actually use them outside of Blazor. It kind of sort of. So in this case, um, their example is that they're building a Razor component, um, Razor server component that you can use in something like an email. Let's say if you ever had to build uh, like a, a proper web application that has a lot of bells and whistles, one of the features that, that you might be asked to do is to build something that generates an email. And normally that email can be built off of your own HTML unless you're using some like other third party thing. And this will allow you to have that option. You could build a custom made email template layout and send that as your option. So that's basically what this means through the, uh, um, the disconnecting of the server, Blazor server component from Blazor server, the architecture itself. So that's just like the, the, the baby way of kind of explaining it. Um, but yeah, this is really important because now we have a way of actually having one component work on the other thing. And this is making progress. So for when it comes to something that we know of Blazor United, it's, they seem to be moving in that direction. I get to why this was written here or why they're, they, they removed Blazor United here in a second. But, you know, don't worry, I get to that. Uh, but the most important thing is that we have that feature. Well, these features are being developed right now, so it's really good. It's not completely 100% there. And also we have some supports for something like sections. I'm not really sure. I'm not really too excited for this, but, you know, it's interesting to always have like a placeholder uh, natively available to you. This is a little bit more exciting to me. Uh, monitor Blazor server circuit activity. So now you can actually see the actual like um, whatever the activity is between the browser and the server. Um, and you can actually do stuff like apparently you can even interrupt the activity and uh, time them out or even time out tokens and stuff like that's pretty cool. That's interesting to me. So there's a lot of flexibility coming in um, through .NET 8 and it's always good to have these options whether or not this will impact you on a day-to-day -day basis or on a, like a like a normal whatever is a normal one you know the average web application uh nice to have but i don't think it's going to be something that's going to be um necessary 
to have or even necessary to know how to do. But you know, maybe I could be wrong. Maybe we'll launch a new, uh, new frontier of this stuff. So, anyways, an issue with Blazor uh, when it comes to firewalls. So, in case you've ever encountered this problem where you have like a firewall and then you try to use Blazor WebAssembly or something that the one that has DLLs, so Blazor WebAssembly, uh, it might be blocked. This is an issue with the firewalls themselves, but they are tracking that issue. They are still working with the antivirus companies to hopefully. Uh, do something about it so that they don't get blocked anymore so that's just a little aside there um they also in case you have not seen this there's also the architecture for blazer united so blazer united looks to be existing before we get into the full blazer united uh talking point i will say that if you look at the issues here that are related to what they call full stack web ui with blazer what used to be called blazer united they're a little less than halfway done with it now this does not mean that the level of work is the same across them all. I'm sure that the level of work when it comes to these different tasks involved with doing this, what is known as Blazor United to us, um, are probably different. But I'm just saying that it is May. Blazor 8 is supposed to come out uh, in November, I believe. And this is how far they've gone, which is still pretty good. They've gone through the part where they're able to actually you know, put a server component on something like WebAssembly and have it kind of work which they need to get through that process, but they still have, you know, about how many months? Like what, six more months before Blazor 8 comes out? So I'm just saying that they're not completely crossing the finish line, like 100%, but they are getting there. So it could be, it could be, I don't know, let's give it about know, 60, 40 chance that they'll actually get the full Blazor United stuff out in November. I hope they do, but I'm just, uh, you know, just telling you what it looks like to me considering what how they've been tracking here like i don't know they, they probably know more stuff than i do but when it comes to you know why they took out blazer united is because of the confusion so really blazer united is still being worked on it's just that they decided not to call it blazer united anymore essentially because blazer united was being confused uh to being another uh hosting model when it isn't it is just allowing the existing hosting models to work in a different way and combining them into basically one uh, hosting model that you could use. So you could use server or WebAssembly as they are, and also have the option to have one with the other, assuming that this is working as intended. Now, the only thing that I will say when it comes to this is when it comes to authentication authorization, I still am not very satisfied with any of the answers here just yet. Maybe I missed something or maybe I'm ignorant of something, I don't know. But that is one of the things I, I was looking for is one of the things that I brought up in my other Blazor United video when it comes to authentication authorization, because now we have this, you know, you have server and you have the client side, you have two different hosting models that had two different ways of dealing with authentication authorization. And I just wanted to see if there's anyone that like brought it up here. And some people did brought it up, but, but I didn't really get a good answer to any of this or how it's supposed to work. I did get like a mention though. Like there was a mention of the authentication authorization stuff. So he does bring up a little bit about um, auth. So I don't know if it's authoring or if it means authentication, but either way, I don't really see like a good like answer to the authentication authorization question. Like if they're gonna streamline or they're gonna, uh, or how it's gonna really work when you have these two things combined to different components. So uh, I guess we'll see. And I was really hoping that they would have something written here, but I just didn't find it. So if you know, or if you have seen this somewhere, then please let me know. Unless it's gonna be something like, uh, we're just keeping like the old way of doing it on server or WebAssembly, then that's another thing. They've also resolved uh, various bugs and such. One of them is this one. So I wanted to make the binding enhancement meaning for a very long time now, but the binding enhancement uh, syntax always broke the compilation. So real quickly, what they added was uh, bind, bind after, and then bind get, bind set to do essentially the whole bind event, bind on value kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna run this really fast and show you that it does work, even though it looks like there is, like the IDE is yelling at me for some reason but it does actually work. Like if you go here, these are the two, these two are both using, um, uh, they're both using the new binding enhancements. So 
and they're both connected to this string here so they're both going to change it so if i go here and put s3 and go out you know that's the on after if i come here and write uh know, new four or new three and that'll be the other one so this might not look like a crazy change but it looks like in dotnet 8 specifically the bind enhancements finally do work where as before they would cause a compilation error so that's just me going over that real quick maybe i'll make a larger video about it later but it looks like they fixed that here so that's pretty good and hopefully they will finally get to bringing up blazer you know what we call blazer united i'm gonna call it blazer united because yeah I, I don't you know full stack we have with blazer like i get what they're doing i get that they're trying to avoid confusion i get that's why they removed this they didn't want to give you the impression that another hosting model is coming out so whatever but you know i'm gonna call it blazer united the, th the, the thumbnail is called blazer united and we all know what it is that is to, to merge the server and web assembly into one um to one uh, hosting model whatever so you know you know but yeah anyways that's it i'm out of here bye